Hi everybody, this is Eric Seropian from This Is My South Bay, and today I have Melanie and uh, Robin. They're here from uh, goodchoicesdt.com. Uh, I'm assuming DT is uh, dog training. Correct. Uh, so goodchoicesdogtraining.com. And uh, I had met Melanie actually playing volleyball in Hermosa Beach, and uh, afterwards we went with some friends to a bar or a pub, what was it, Sharky's or whatever, and uh, we ended up striking up a conversation. I was really interested in uh, her line of work, and uh, here we are. She's in the studio with us. Thanks for having us, Eric. Thank you. So uh, I, I feel like this interview would be best uh, done by my wife. <laughs> my wife is really into dogs. Like, we'll be walking down the street, and she'll go up to every dog, go, go to the owner first, and be like, uh, can I pet them? And just she'll spend, you know, which feels like an hour with them, but it's a couple minutes, and then uh, we'll walk away. And she's been wanting us to adopt the puppy for a while now. And I've been hesitant up until maybe a couple months ago. We had a friend that um, uh, they were going on vacation. They decided they asked to, for us to uh, babysit the dog, or dog sit the dog. I don't know how you say it. And um, and I just fell in love with the with the guy. His name is Bo. Bo, if you're listening, um, I miss you. So he was just a regular, you know. He, he was just like one of us in the, in the apartment. Like he was he was trained. Uh, he didn't bark uh, too much. And he, I, I mean, it's not a dog that uh, you know is setting the world on fire. He's blind from one eye. He's deaf, but he was he's just a cool dude. And so uh, it, that process and we've probably uh, have taken them in several times since and we've been uh, uh, I've been very happy with the situation I keep telling my wife if it's going to be another bow then I'm open to this to this process so um, I wanted to kind of uh, see if you can help us down this road because we want to go to a shelter and we want to get a, a, a puppy that is going to be um, mixing well with with both of us that, uh, you know, we, we don't have a conflict in uh, a, a relationship or, we, you know, we're not, we're not, we're kind of comfortable in the same space. So do you have any experience with this, first of all? Yes, we have quite a bit. In fact, we actually offer a doggy matchmaking service. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, specifically for the situation where people are thinking about getting a dog and not sure what breed or what age or what, you know, what they're looking for. So we kind of assist in matching that dog with them, and we we have um, some rescue groups that we work with, and we'll also go to shelters and uh, help you find the right dog. So I think my one of my first cautions <laughs> for you would be don't try to find another bow because there is no other bow. Bow is bow. That's that's true. Okay, so I try, try to keep you to op keep an open mind about that. But I guess one of the first questions would be about your lifestyle, about uh, what you want to do with your dog, um, how involved. Uh, the dog is going to be in your lives daily. Uh, what you, what really, what you want out of this relationship? Okay, and so this is something that uh, with a client you go to the shelter, and you, you, uh, uh, is there some kind of a uh, like a matchmaking process where you sit back and you see the the person with the dog and see if there's any kind of chemistry or connection, or how does it work? So basically, it's almost like setting up an interview for the dogs. But first, we have to get the interview questions, so we have to talk to the owner first. So it's very much exactly what Robin just said. We want to know what the, the person wants from the dog in terms of where they're going to go with the dog, what they want the dog to do in the home and outside of the home, things like that. Because say, for example, you've got an older couple, and they're like 80 years old, and they want a puppy. Well, we're not going to suggest an Australian Shepherd <laughs> or a puppy in general because chances are this couple's not going to be physically capable of handling a dog that's young and energetic. Okay. Robin's shaking her head. Yeah, I, I made that mistake. That's why I'm <laughs> laughing because when I got my Australian Shepherd puppy, I then got a job that I had to go out of town for, it was, I think it was 16 days, and I left this Australian puppy with my older parents. Okay. And they um, they enjoyed some of it, okay. <laughs> and then they cursed me. Okay, so let's say um, we go to the shelter, you come with us, and then we both find a puppy that we like. Do we uh, uh, 
leave with the puppy? Do we go back another time to see the puppy again? It's really going to be case by case. Um, It's very situational. I mean, first of all, we'd want to make sure that you want a puppy, and that's a whole other conversation. Um, But we'd want to see how you interact with the puppy, how the puppy interacts with you. So much of what we do involves understanding body language. Um, and and teaching our clients how to understand body language because that's the dog's language. That's how they communicate, and they are always communicating, and we just don't speak that language, so we don't know it. And a lot of communication is missed and misunderstood because of that. Um, So we'd want to see what is the dog's body language with these people, how do the people interact with the dog. Um, Whether or not we do a second visit would really depend on how ready the people are. it would really be case by case. There, there's no kind of set rule. Okay. And let's say we walk in, we, we see a puppy that we like, the puppy likes us, we want to take it home. Uh, do we leave that day or is there some kind of... If your of- home is prepared for a puppy. Okay. Yeah. And that's one of the things that we would kind of jump in and help you with, like create a list of, you know, almost like, is the house ready for the new baby type thing? <laughs> that's you, exactly what it is. Yeah. Do you have baby <laughs> gates? Is everything puppy proofed? Um, are exposed wires put away? It's very much oh, wow. like getting a new baby. Are you going to be home? You can't just get a puppy on a Saturday morning and go back to your regular work routine and disappear for eight or nine hours on Monday. Okay. That would be a very unfortunate thing. Agreed. <laughs> so uh, this is a service that you offer. And uh, give me an idea, a couple of other services that you specialize in. We also work with um, clients privately in home to kind of set the dog up for success if they've got very specific issues like they're working on reactivity um, or jumping on guests when they come home, uh, potty training, things like that. And then we also offer group classes and basic manners, agility, and tricks. So give me a couple of um, things that people are mostly asking for. I'd probably lump that into two kind of main categories with lots of subcategories. The first one we hear all the time is my dog won't listen to me or my dog only listens at home. And then we go outside and and they ignore me. Um, And that can show up in a lot of different ways. My dog doesn't come when I call him. He pulls on the leash. He won't stop when I say no. Those are all kind of within that realm of my dog doesn't listen to me. Um, And the second one would be reactivity. And reactivity is something that a lot of people label aggression, but it's truly more often than not fear. Um, And the dog, this manifests as the dog is barking, lunging, pulling, um, you know, growling, snapping at skateboarders, bicycles, other dogs, people, strangers, men, like however that may be. That's all under reactivity. Why not women? (laughs) <laughs> it it does have, in fact, I just met a dog yesterday yeah. who actually has, um, is more reactive towards women. More really? often than not, though, it's men. Yeah. Really? You, okay. Yeah. Men are bigger. Okay. Yeah, you have some really nice videos on your Instagram. Thanks. So when you go to the website, click on some of the social media channels, it shows uh, people uh, with, their, with their puppies and uh, uh, it's cool stuff. It's educational. Uh, so how would someone get in touch with you? Um, Well, we have our phone number. Our main phone number is 424-262-5004. You can call us during the day. We are often in and out of sessions, so we're not always able to answer. But we ask, please leave a message, and we'll call you back that evening uh, or the next business day. Um, Email is fine, too. You can send an email to trainer at goodchoicesd as in dog, t as in training.com. So goodchoicesdt.com. And our website, too. You can actually fill out a, a, a contact us form there, and that goes straight to us as well. And what areas do you cover? We cover everything as far north as Santa Monica. We might even go to Palisades if we got a call for um, that area. We go to West LA, Mid-City, and all the way down to San Pedro. On your website, I see there's uh, class schedules. Generally, where are the classes? They are at um, a doggy daycare called Camp Runamut, which is on 190th Street in Gardena. So let's say I come home from the shelter and uh, a day into it, I don't know, three, four days into it, I have buyer's remorse or I, we're just not gelling with, with the puppy. What do you suggest or what has happened in the past? So depending on which shelter you go to, if you're getting from a shelter, a lot of them have a three-day, unfortunately worded, return policy. <laughs> You okay. can take the dog back and they won't charge you. After three days, a lot of times they, they will because then it's suddenly your dog. Um, 
a lot of rescues, they have that written to their contract. If you're getting a dog from them, they will absolutely take the dog back if it doesn't mesh. Um, but a lot of rescues also, they ha instead of you taking it home and then being suddenly stuck with the dog, they offer a, you know foster for a few days. So you can kind of get a trial period instead of just, okay, committing and then feeling bad when you give them back. And I'm sure they want to make sure that the puppy ends up in a want in a home that they're wanted. Absolutely. Yes. A lot of rescues are very great about interviewing and making sure that they match the dogs up correctly with the owners. And we're just kind of there to help smooth that, that transition out. And, uh, I've heard from friends that there's insurance for health insurance type of thing for, uh, your pets. Yeah, there's a lot of options now. It's really great. I actually, um, I'm, I'm a firm believer in insurance. You're going to hear two, there's two schools of thought. One is that you should absolutely have insurance. And the other is you should have an emergency savings account. Um, I would say with a minimum balance of $5,000 because you just never know. For me, knowing that my dog was going to be out in the public and around other dogs a lot, I went with the insurance and it has paid for itself many times and, and through no fault of what I thought might happen. I thought she might get attacked. I thought, you know, it just turned out she had a birth defect and needed surgery. Oh, wow. And you're versed on these subjects. If someone called and had some questions, you'd be able to consult them. I could consult on, I mean, on the research that I've done on, and the, and the, I've had insurance policies from two different companies. Um, I wouldn't be able to talk. There's so many more now, okay. um, but I would certainly recommend it for depending upon what people are going to be doing with their dogs like if they're going to be doing a lot of different sports if they're going to be doing fly ball if they're going to be doing agility if they're going to be going to competitions i would say absolutely and if nothing else that emergency fund is a is a necess is a necessity um, i have a friend right now who who had an accident with a cat and he was not prepared for it and he had to start a gofundme page oh wow yeah okay. or put the cat down and that was that's a horrible decision you never want to have to make gotcha Coming up, are you going to be at any events in the South Bay area? Yeah, we're going to be at a really cool event called Pups in the Park, which is being put on by the LA Galaxy. Um, that's Saturday, September 1st, and that's an opportunity for people to bring their well-socialized, friendly dogs <laughs> <laughs> um, to the event. There'll be a lot of other dog um, and pet vendors there, and then they get to actually watch the game. Oh, wow. And so, we'll be there with some agility equipment yeah. and offering a little cute little tricks and things like that and tips to kind of get owners set up on the right step with uh, new behaviors. Is that any size dog or is there a mm -hmm. limit on it? No. Oh, wow. And uh, what was the date, date on that again? Saturday, September 1st. Okay. All right. So if this is something that's interesting to you, go to their website and uh, goodchoicesdt.com. There's a lot of information there. It, it, uh, if not, fill out their form. Call them, check out their social media, and um, uh, see if this is something that would be helpful for you. 424-262-5004. And that's, again, goodchoicesdt.com. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.